Tennessee looked really, really good on Saturday nights. Not even looked better upon rewatch. I know, I know, inferior opponent, but Tennessee did exactly what it was supposed to do, and that's beat the crap out of a bad team. Will that be enough? Riding high, momentum is high, heading to Missouri. Get to that this week, but we're going to recap all the what. Tennessee's win over UConn here on a Monday, Locked On Balls. You are Locked On Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, good Monday morning, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Vols. It is your team every single day. Big shout out to LinkedIn John for uh, helping us all find the right people for your team faster and for free. You can post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions do apply. Got a fun Monday show coming up. Recapping all that was Tennessee's win over UConn. Rewatch notes. I got a lot of them here in segment number one. Scoring plays courtesy of the Vol Radio Network. In segment two, we'll get to hear how it sounded from the radio booth. And then stats and some caner grades in segment number three. Uh, We'll have pro football focused stats that matter on Wednesday. Uh, We'll start churning the the page to Missouri Thursday and Friday, of course. We'll have a crossover edition at some point later this week. we got a whole lot to get into. Plus, your mailbag questions on tomorrow's mailbag show at underscore caner at Lockdown Vols. And, of course, on the YouTube channel. Get in all those questions you may have. The race to 10K is on. If you haven't subscribed to Lockdown Vols on the YouTube channel, and you're watching us right now, please help me out. Throw a little subscription out there. Trying to get to 10,000 followers by the time football season is over. Got a little less than a month to do it, and uh, we're about 450 away. All right, so going back and looking at some of the notes that I took upon rewatch, I kind of broke some things down, and and I, I thought the biggest takeaways from this game, explosive plays, defensive touchdowns, of course, and then Nico. Uh, You know, there's no quarterback controversy. There is no... Um, there's nothing along that, along those, those lines, but for a guy that we haven't got to see a play a lot this year, albeit Austin P he should have UTSA he should have played a little bit more. Um, it, it was fun to watch him play. And so, you know, forgive us if we want to look to the future a little bit right now in a game that just doesn't matter. New wasn't going to matter coming into UConn and Tennessee went out there and handled business. So we'll get to Nico here in just a moment, but something that's been lacking in the, uh, in the offense this year whether it be pass operation, personnel, blocking, quarterback, whatever the case may be, maybe play calling at times. It's been those explosive plays. last couple of weeks, it's been much, much better because Joe Milton is playing much, much better. But Tennessee had no issue finding those explosive plays in this football game. I know, I know, inferior opponent, but don't you want to like rack them up in a game like this? And that's what Tennessee did. Second play from scrimmage, Jalen Wright, 82 yards to the house. Beautiful split zone concept. You had Spragans, the guard, blocking down. You had Cooper Mays, the center, uh, chipping the the uh, one technique up to the backer. You had an H-back and McCallum Castle tight end come in, go right where Cooper Mays was, get that backside backer, and then you had Jay Wright come up right behind him. It's called split zone. Looked beautiful, turned on the Jets, and now he becomes just the second VFL ever to have multiple 80-yard touchdowns in his Tennessee career. It was the ninth longest scoring play Overall, the ninth longest run in Tennessee program history, and it got Tennessee off to a great start. We'll hear that, hear that here in just a moment. Uh, of course, Jalen Wright, only eight carries on the day, averaging 14 point yards per carry, went over 2,000 career rushing yards and 2,100 career rushing yards in the football game. And a lot of that had to do with getting off on the right foot. <laughs> and that was, um, of course, you know what, uh, what he did with that play number one. Uh, a lot of these notes I'm taking, and I, I'm, um, I'm looking – at uh, the the story that I write over at VolQuest, uh, VolQuest.com on a, on a Sunday, and I encourage you guys to read it. You can see, call it the big three, talking explosive plays here. I put in some video cut-ups and all that, and then I kind of break some things down. So on Sundays, if you want some light reading, I encourage you to go check out uh, the, the big three over at VolQuest.com. And so I'm taking some notes from that, of course, plenty more if you want to go check it out. Uh, but back to explosive plays, Jalen Wright got things going. Romel Keaton had a 60-yard touchdown reception. He was wide open, a little switch com- uh, combination, and the safety never got him. And then later on, it was Squirrel White, who um, you know had a skinny post and just kept climbing and climbing. 83 yards for the score. It's the longest pass play for Tennessee since 2006. So the explosive plays were 
off and running, if you will, and that was really, really good to see uh, in this football game. So I love the explosive plays from the offense. Of course, I wrote about it, talked about it on the uh, the postcast. If you guys hadn't had a chance to listen or watch the postcast from Saturday night, I encourage you to go back and, and view that. But the defensive scores were incredible. Um, you had Tyler Barron's 24-yard scoop and score. He had been close, Ole Miss 2001, Pittsburgh 2001, and they called him back. And so in the back of his mind, I'm sure he was like, are they going to call this one back? But uh, he found his way into the end zone, but it was not before a beautiful, beautiful uh, strip tackle from Gabe Judy Lolly. Uh, keeping outside leverage, setting the edge, securing the tackle, stripping the football loose. It was, it's teach tape. I mean, it's teach tape. And that was just a gorgeous, gorgeous play from Gabe Judy Lolly. That was touchdown number one on defense, came right before the half. The first play from scrimmage in the second half, it's a pick six. Pick six, Jalen McCullough. 30 yards to the house. He jumps on a slant, poorly thrown football uh, from the UConn quarterback because Karak Garland was applying some pressure, and McCullough made him pay, get into the end zone. The very next possession, it's Aaron Beasley, 39-yard pick six. Um, he just, you know, is tailing the drag route, and the ball is overthrown a little bit. Some pressure from James Pearson from Tyler Barron, and Aaron Beasley makes a play. So, man, I mean... Uh, <laughs> First time in, in modern program history that you've ever had three defensive scores. I don't care who you're playing. I don't care who the opponent is. That is really, really impressive. Job well done. I mean, man, I mean, pass defense, a little suspect in the first quarter. There were 200 yards of total offense in the first half for UConn. It's not great, but Tennessee put those clamps on, changed the way the game was. I mean, it was never in doubt. Tennessee was never losing this game, but changed the 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 trajectory of the game completely with those back-to-back -back pick sixes to begin the second half and of course the scoop and score touchdown in uh in quarter number two so Tennessee's off and running no pun intended and then the last thing I kind of wanted to to write about over the weekend of course pay attention to in the reach rewatch was Nico Iamaliava um you know why not look ahead a little bit <laughs> you know in a game that just doesn't matter Nico got two series and I said on the uh I said on the uh, the, the postcast uh, on Saturday night that I would have loved to have seen him play more, and I didn't quite get that coaching decision, but understand they need to get some more offensive linemen in there, understand it's homecoming, understand that those guys like Gas and Moore and Navy Shuler work just as hard, and they want to they want to get out there and have a, have a chance to play. And I believe in that. Trust me. I mean, I you know I played a lot of football in my life. All those times I was those guys on fourth and fifth team, you know, getting an opportunity to play on homecoming. So I get it. I get it. Um, just doesn't really settle to me that in a 59 to three blowout win, Nico Iamaliava got two series, but Hey, again, I'm not hating. That is my only critique really of this football game. Um, nonetheless, Nico did go in there. Two series looked really, really good doing it. It was kind of a combination of starters and backups on the offensive line. His first series had Jeremiah Crawford at left tackle, Addison Nichols at left guard, Cooper Mays at center, Javonta Spragans at right guard and Dane Davis at right tackle. So some backups, but also some starters, he looked really good. A little, little touch pass on the jet sweep to D. Williams, who got in the game on offense to get both those guys kind of settled in. I love that play call. Um, he pocket presence, pocket awareness. It's gonna it's just it's gonna be something to behold the next couple of years. Um, you can tell he's been coached the right way. It's fun to watch. Uh, converted on two third downs, threw on the run. Again, Nico's performance was really, really good. Was he perfect? No, he missed some throws. But again, stepping up in the pocket, moving, rolling in the pocket, sidestepping. I mean, his pocket awareness is off the charts. And and his the 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 play action, little, little fake quarterback draw, and then you know, pulling the linebackers in and then throwing a rope to, to McCallum Castles, beautiful. I thought it was really, really fun watching uh watching Nico Iamaliaba. Also, um, you know, there were some guys who didn't play in this football game because again it was UConn. I think that are going to be fine and well and be be ready to go at Missouri this week. Jabari Small, John Campbell, Amari Thomas, all those guys were dressed on the sideline in full uniform. Some guys who flashed that might not jump out on the stat sheet, but I thought had pretty good games. Aaron Beasley, Elijah Simmons had a great game on the defensive line. I thought the cornerbacks, Gabe Judy Lolly, Danico Slaughter, and Ricky Gibson all tackled very well in this football game. Thought, Car thought Karat Garland played really well on the defensive line, and I thought Jordan Thomas played really well in the defensive backfield. I know those are just defensive players, but all those guys really just kind of jumped out to me on tape upon rewatch, and so I wanted to share those with you here. Hey, when we come back, scoring plays. How did it sound courtesy of the Vol Radio Network? That is coming up next right here 
on Locked On Vols, and we'll get into uh, scoring plays and uh, canter grades. That's what you had to look forward to right here as the show continues here on a Monday. Do want to tell you about our friends, Athletic Brewing Company. It's now time for your Game Changer of the Week, and that's brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Much like Nico Imaliyev, let's go with Nico. All right, let's go with Nico. 5-9, 86 yards, touchdown. Like I just said, moving in the pocket, had a 25-yard scramble on third down. He was really good. Much like Nico, Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. All right, their brews are great-tasting, award-winning. They beat out full-strength uh, beers in global competitions as well, have over 50 styles of craft, non-alcoholic beers, including IPAs, Golden Sours, and more, plus fit for all times. So you can drink them anytime, anywhere, for any activity, making even everything more enjoyable. Plus, no hangovers ever. That is what you have to look forward to. So, first-time customers, use that promo code Locked On to get 15% off your first online order. That's promo code Locked On at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewingcompany.com. Let me try that again. Athleticbrewing.com. Athleticbrewing.com. Near beer exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company. Fit for all times. Hey, welcome back into your Monday edition of Locked On Vols. Tennessee, a big winner, 59-3 over UConn. Knew it was going to be a big win. Wanted to get in, handle business, get out, stay injury-free. And for the most part, I think Tennessee accomplished really all those things and uh, and looked good doing it. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you see the bottom ticker. Uh, it's been kind of scrolling around right over there. Tennessee, of course, moves up to uh, you know number 14 in the latest Associated Press poll. Moved up a couple more spots in the coaches poll. So I thought that was... Noteworthy, Tennessee is going to be the CBS 3.30 Eastern time kick each of the next two weeks. It's great news for me when I'm doing Missouri literally all in a day, flying out early Saturday morning, doing the game. I guess I'm staying technically one night in Missouri, going to get a couple hours of sleep, and then <laughs> middle of the night taking a, a flight back, and I'll be back here Sunday morning. So great news for me. Tennessee, Georgia, we knew it was going to be the 3.30 CBS, so uh, looking forward to that. But again, CBS 3.30 kick each of the next two weeks again against Missouri and um and Georgia, Tennessee up five spots in the AP poll to number 14. Tennessee up four spots in the coaches poll to number 12. And as always, your Twitter Tuesday questions, get those in. We will answer them on tomorrow's show. Shout out every dayers. Okay, let's uh, hear how it sounded, courtesy of the Vol Radio Network. From the booth, you got Pat Ryan, color, color commentator, former Tennessee quarterback back in the day. Of course, Bob Kessling, Brent Hubbs, of course, analyst as well. I have written and verbal permission to play these calls. These scoring plays, courtesy of the Vol Radio Network here on Locked On Vols. And let's go ahead and hear how it sounded. Well, just second play from scrimmage. The second play from scrimmage, Tennessee jumps on the board. An 83, 82-yard touchdown run on split zone concept from Jalen Wright. Tennessee hands it off to Wright again. Fighting and breaks a tackle to the 30, to the 40. It's a foot race midfield to the 40, to the 30. They'll never catch him. He's out of here. Break up Rocky Top. Touchdown, Tennessee. Jalen Wright goes 82 yards. Again, split zone concept, great getting up to the backers by Cooper Mays and McCallan Castles, who came in at the H-back, and then from there it was a speed and making some guys miss from Jalen Wright. Tennessee's up 7-0. On the postcast Saturday night, again, I encourage you to go listen to it. Some good stuff there, if I do say so myself. Um, I talked a little bit about Jim Mora, some things that happened before the game, some things he said in his postgame press conference after the game. <laughs> I never had issue with Jim Moore, and I don't really have issue with him, but I kind of think differently of him a little bit now moving forward. Um, I'm sitting there, and you have the ball at the four-yard line, and you're playing the University of Tennessee, and you're one and seven. You are not going to win this football game. So when he's at the four-yard line, he kicks the field goal. He kicks a field goal with just under three minutes left in the first quarter to avoid getting shut out. And to his credit... The final score reads 59 to 3 and not 59 to 0. Both sound like pretty shitty games for him, <laughs> but 59 to 3 doesn't mean you got shut out. So I guess to each his own. Sorry about the language. You got kids in the car. I promise I'll clean it up. My wife tells me I need to stop cussing. Anyway, um, I just I don't I don't get that. You're gonna lose by seven touchdowns. Why on earth are you kicking the field goal? Alas, alas. UConn kicks the field goal on the board at 7-3. Tennessee comes back in the first quarter, and it's a wide, wide open Ramel Keaton. Did anybody go back to the Virginia game? It wasn't quite the same play. That play was a gorgeous 80-yard bomb by Joe Milton that was dropped by Ramel Keaton. This one only 60 yards, or really even less than that with the ball in its air. 
But anybody go back to that Virginia game and say, please catch it, please catch it, please catch it. Romel Keaton caught it, wide open, 60 yards to the house, and Tennessee went up 14-3. to First down, Tennessee at the 40, Milton back to pass. There he is. Winds up wide, open down at the 20, and he's got it to the 10, to the checkerboards. Touchdown, Romel Keaton. 60 yards on the throw from Joe Milton. Somebody lost Romel Keaton, and he was wide open. In fact, he had to kind of wait a little bit for that pass, but it got downfield. Keaton makes the grab. And Keaton gets the touchdown, and Tennessee scores, and now leads UConn by a score of 13-3. to I've been asked about that call because people have been in the car and were listening to Bob, and they said, well, was the ball underthrown or anything? I mean, I wouldn't say it was necessarily underthrown. I mean, Keaton had to slow down just a hair, but it was still an over-the-shoulder catch, and he was so wide open that I'm sure when Joe saw that he was so wide open, he probably took a little something off just to make sure – that he wasn't going to overthrow him and, uh, you know, lean into that nickname, Overthrow Joe, right? Well, Tennessee's up 14-3. to Tennessee gets back onto the board midway through the second quarter. Joe Milton goes into the red zone and takes it in himself on an option play. Six yards to the house, and here's how it sounded on the Ball Radio Network as Tennessee goes up 21-3. to So second and goal, Tennessee at the UConn 6. Option near side. Milton cuts it up into the checkerboards. Touchdown, Tennessee. Joe Milton running the option to the left, decides to keep it, turns it up, dashes in for a score, and now Tennessee goes up on top of UConn 20-3 as Joe Milton picks up his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. Okay, nothing too spectacular about that play. Joe Milton, again, fifth rushing touchdown of the season. That's great. Tennessee's up 21-3. Let's go back to that Ramel Keaton play real quick. I forgot to, to mention one thing. Here's how he got wide open. It was a switch route. Keaton on the outside, squirrel wide in the slot. They did a switch route, and the cornerback stayed, obviously, with uh, with with the outside man in the corner, stayed, you know, switched, stayed with Squirrel White, and the safety just stopped and did not run up the seam with Ramel Keaton. And it just a simple, I mean, literally, a switch route is super simple. As a defensive back, you, you practice those, you go over those, passing off to the next guy all the time, whether you're in zone, if you're in man, you run. Even if you're in man, sometimes you can yell, switch, switch, switch. I mean, it's super simple. You go over defending those every single day, but it was a wide open, open reception there for Mel Keaton. All right, so Milton scores. Squirrel White, 83 yards, said in the explosive play section in segment number one, longest pass play since 06. It was, I believe, Eric Ainge to, I had it written down somewhere. Actually, I can tell you right now, if you just bear with me for just a second, I can tell you right now because it was... It was it was Eric Ainge to Robert Meacham, 84 yards in Memphis uh, back in September the 30th, 2006. Also, those two pick sixes, first time it's happened since 2013. Some guys by the name of Justin Coleman uh, yeah, and Cam Sutton. Yeah, we know those guys. Anyway, um, so we're going to Squirrel White, 83 yards. It was, a, it was a post. He just kept climbing and climbing. It was Joe's second read. And he makes the throw. He's not making that throw earlier in the year. I just want to point out that point that out. He makes the throw, uses his speed to get to the sideline, then up the sideline for the uh, for the touchdown. 83 yards, and Tennessee leads 28 to three. Milton play fake looks long, fires over the middle. Squirrel White's got it at the 40. The He's got some jets to the 40. Turns He's... it on to the 30, to the 20, Gone. all the way to the checkerboards. Touchdown! 83 yards. Squirrel White came over the middle, and Joe Milton right on target again with another big play for this Tennessee offense. So that was just with five minutes to go in the second quarter. Tennessee up 28-3. to He kicked the football back to UConn, and uh, here's the Gabe G. Lolly play. Just beautiful play. Throws out to the perimeter a little bit. It was Gordon Porter that caught it. He's trying to get to the edge. Judy Lawley, the cornerback, is setting the edge, which means setting the edge means you don't let anybody outside. So he's setting the edge. He is keeping his outside leverage free, his outside arm free. He goes, makes the tackle, and then strips that sucker out. It's a gift. Tyler Barron picks it up and runs it in, and it was a beautiful play that was earned by Gabe Judy Lawley, a gift for Tyler Barron. Tennessee's on the board 35-3 to just before halftime. Roberson back to throw. A little quick slant to the left side to Porter, but he's ball. thrown down. Lost the ball. It's picked up by Tennessee. Running toward the end zone is going to be Tyler Barron for a Tennessee touchdown. A scoop and score by Tyler Barron. 
as UConn lost the handle and Barron right there to pick it up and take it in. 24 yards for the Tennessee score. A defensive touchdown for Tennessee. And if the game ended right there, you say, wow, Tennessee, some explosive plays. You got a defensive score. Hey, job well done. Great job. You know, inferior opponent, sure, but you scored on defense. Great job. Little did we all know Tennessee was going to score two more times. Pick six, first play from scrimmage in the second half. It's a Roberson again, the quarterback for UConn. He throws it. He gets pressure by Karad Garland. Premature throw. Safety Jalen McCullough jumps on the slant. And here's how it sounds, courtesy of the Vol Radio Network. It is a pick six of 30 yards for senior safety Jalen McCullough. Roberson comes out, backs into the shotgun with two wideouts to the left, one to the right. Tennessee with a four-man front. And Roberson drops to throw. Tennessee blitzing the throw it over the Pick middle. Off. It's intercepted by Jalen McCullough at the 25 to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Tennessee. Play number one, the interception. Jalen McCullough picked it off at the 30 and raced in for a Tennessee touchdown. Very next possession, okay? Tennessee scores, kick the PAT, kick off, and here we are again. In that series, it's Aaron Beasley that... You know, takes advantage of a uh, drag route that's thrown just in front of the guy. Takes it 39 yards to the house, and Tennessee goes up 49-3. to Aaron Beasley, a 39-yard pick six. At the UConn 37-yard line. Five-man front for Tennessee. Roberson back to throw. Pressured off his back foot. That's Picked intercepted, off. and that's going to be intercepted for Tennessee as Aaron Beasley picks it off, and he runs toward the pylon. And touchdown, Tennessee. 37 yards. Aaron Beasley picks off the pass and rumbles 37 yards. Tennessee's second pick six of this third quarter. Wow. And again, because of the two pick sixes quickly, it took a possession or two away for Tennessee's offense to work. And that probably contributed to why Nico only got two series. Anyway, still would like to see him play a lot more. But anyway, anyway, um, the last play I'm going to call is or the last clip I'm going to play is Nico to McCallan Castles for the 19 yard touchdown pass. Tennessee did score after that again. It was a 33 yard field goal from backup place kicker Josh Turbeville, who handles the kickoffs. And um, he might be Tennessee's kicker next year, guys. He has got a leg on him. Anyway, McCallan Castles, 19 yards. It was a play. It's considered play action because it is a fake quarterback draw, pulls the LBs up. And then Nico, just a strike, didn't utilize pocket presence on this one, but he did during his series. Boy, Nico is going to be good. Here's how his first career touchdown sounded by Bob Kessling and uh, Pat Ryan, courtesy of the Vol Radio Network. Castle's a wing back to the left. Nico looks, fakes, fires over the middle. Pass Whoa. caught by Castle. Touchdown, Tennessee. Castle's the wing back, went right down the middle. Nico faked to the left and found Castles right down the seam. 19 yards for a Tennessee touchdown. And that is Nico's first Tennessee score on a pass to McCallan Castle. Again, big thanks to the Vol Radio Network for giving me verbal and red permission to play these clips here on Locked On Vols. Hope you guys enjoyed them. Big win for Tennessee, 59-3 to over UConn. We'll take a look at the stat sheet, and I'll hand out some Caner grades as we say goodbye here on this Monday edition of Locked On Balls, that is coming up next. I appreciate you guys, as always, for being here. I do want to tell you about our friends, a uh, proud sponsor of the show. That is LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you've got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. We have all put our resumes online with hopes of gaining a better job, a stepping stone, if you will, in our careers. Maybe you've reached that. Maybe you're a small business owner and you're proud of your work, but you need some help. Okay, You need someone you can trust, someone who's qualified to help you and your baby, essentially, your small business. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates you as a small business owner can focus on with the people who have just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and then ultimately hire. It's why small businesses rank LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus its leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs lets you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash just kidding. It's LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. That's when I when I lose my spot in the read there. LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, we got a final segment left here this Monday edition of Locked On Vols. Don't forget your questions every day or as you take over the show tomorrow on a Tuesday at underscore Kaner at Locked On Vols. And, of course, you can leave a comment 
on this video here on YouTube, and I will do my best to uh, work your questions in. Let's take a look at some of the stats. It was complete domination, as it should have been for Tennessee. Tennessee had over 400 yards of offense in the first half. Um, Tennessee finished with 650 yards of total offense. That is getting her done right there. Woo! Um, that's off of 65 plays. Tennessee averaged 10 yards per play on offense. Penalties. And Tennessee's not a clean football team. Never never really has been under Josh Heupel. 11 penalties for 90 yards. Again, penalties will get you beat in a close game, as we've seen in, uh, you know, as we've seen at points and times this season. Tennessee, 650 yards of total offense. UConn, 256. Reminder, 200 yards of total offense for UConn in the first half. That means only 56 yards of total offense in the second half. 221 yards through the air for UConn. 375 yards through the air for Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee rushed for 275 yards, averaging 8.1 yards per carry. UConn ran for 35 yards, averaging 1.2 yards per carry. Uh, Tennessee, again, played an inferior opponent. Recognize that. You're... you're you're, you're head deep into an SEC schedule, and you've got some more games to come. But still, it's long enough to say the stats matter. Tennessee leads the SEC in rushing yards, and Tennessee leads the SEC in rush defense. It's a pretty good football team Josh Hoppel has here in year number three and uh, trying to win on the road to Missouri this week. Plenty more on that as the week goes on. Uh, Tennessee, 8 of 12 on third down conversions. Not bad. 2 of 4 in the red zone while scoring touchdowns. Tennessee was... Uh, let's see here. Three for four in the red zone. The one that didn't convert was on the last series of the game where they just let the clock run out. Uh, two of four in scoring touchdowns, so really two of three. And uh, Tennessee, of course, scored 21 points off turnovers. Let's look at defense real quick. Um, you know, first half pass defense wasn't great. There were some penalties that kind of kept drives alive. Uh, I thought UConn on, on a couple of drives continued to <laughs> convert on third downs. Uh, what's his name? Old Justin Jolly, yeah, he's not going to be a Husky next year. Uh, that boy is going to hit the transfer portal and go somewhere and power five football and do well. That guy is a player, that tight end. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, Tennessee has two senior tight ends saying goodbye after this year, uh, but old Josh Heupel making some notes on old Justin Jolly saying, boy, maybe we'll see what he can look like in this offense maybe. Whew, he was a good player. And that's a beautiful thing. I mean, it sucks for those programs I get it, but that's a beautiful thing about players like that. You ball out in games like this. Transfer portal is your best friend. Uh, Tennessee, again, not the, not the greatest day defensively, but, I mean, you don't give up a touchdown. You give up just three points, and you score three touchdowns on defense. Uh, again, it, it's like I can't necessarily say not the greatest day defensively when you do all that. It's an inferior opponent. I recognize that. You want to tighten up defensively. Um, you want a better performance out of your, your past defense. But still, you tackle well. I haven't checked the missed tackle stats over pro football focus yet. But you tackle well, you created turnovers, you scored. You didn't. You had 13 TFLs, which was great. Only one sack. That's okay. Again, 13 TFLs speaks more volumes than the one sack does. Again, overall, pr pretty solid day defensively. You, you don't have much to nitpick here. I'm trying my best here. You don't have much to nitpick here whenever you score three defensive touchdowns. Elijah Herring led the way with seven tackles. Um you had Danico Slaughter with five tackles. He was credited with that sack. It's funny, the one sack he got was technically on an intentional grounding. So anyway, uh, defense, some solid stuff there. Uh, let's look at offense, shall we? And we'll go through and grade these as we go. So we just did defense. Um, D-line, I will go uh, I'll go B+. Plus. There were some penalties there that were not great. Um, but literally, you gave up 35 yards on the ground, and you helped – Tackle the ball here in the backfield 13 times. Uh, not too shabby there. Linebackers, I'll go B plus as well. Uh, you did have a pick six. Elijah Herring loved the team in tackles. Um, there were a couple of missed tackles. Actually, I'm going to go an A. I'm going to go an A. I thought, I thought more linebackers flashed in this game. Beasley was all over the place. I thought T-Lander played pretty well. I'll go A right there. Defensive backs, you were soft in coverage at times. You had a pick six with Jalen McCullough. You tackled really well on the perimeter, I thought. I thought Jordan Thomas played well. I'm going to give the defensive backs a B. Um, again, hard to criticize in this football game. Let's go A. Uh, let's go uh, offense. Yeah, Joe Milton, 11-14. Only played one half. 254 yards, two touchdowns. Joe Milton has yet to throw for 300 yards as a starting quarterback at Tennessee, yet he would have thrown for 450 yards yesterday if he played a whole football game. 11-14 through the air. 254 yards, two touchdowns. Had a rushing touchdown of six yards as well. Three total touchdowns. 
I mean, come on now. Joe Milton gets an A. He's playing good football. Uh, running backs. Well, Jalen Wright, <laughs> 113 yards. A touchdown on only eight carries, 14.1 yards per carry. Uh, Dylan Sampson played pretty well, 28 yards, 5.6 yards per carry. Jabari Small did not play in this football game. He'll be fine for Missouri, is from what I'm told. I thought Cam Selden ran the ball well, six carries, 35 yards. He averaged 5.8 yards per carry. thought some walk-ons ran pretty well. Patrick Wilk. I thought Hunter Barnes ran well. Khalifa Keith got some opportunities. Um, running backs, you're going to get uh, an A. Uh, tight ends, you get an A. McCallum Castle's big day. Had a great block on the split zone. Uh, touchdown run from um, from Jalen Wright. Of course, had the touchdown reception. Oh, that was Jacob Warren. Excuse me. That was Jacob Warren on the block. McCallum Castle's had the touchdown reception. Um, and, of course, anytime you run for 275 yards, your tight ends are a big part of that. You get an A. Wide receivers, yeah, you get an A. Uh, made some plays. Um, didn't drop. Easy balls. Uh, had a lot of guys rotate in and play some play some snaps for you. Wide receivers get an A, and then offensive line, you get an A as well. I mean, it's really hard to nitpick here, guys. <laughs> your 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 offense almost goes for 700 yards, and you run for 275 yards, and you have two quarterbacks who look really really good, and you run the football. I mean, it's just an A fest. Again, you play in for your opponents is what you get. A quarterback, A running back, A tight ends, A wide receivers, A offensive line. Um, Defensive line, we already said B+. Plus. Linebacker gets an A. Defensive back gets a B. Special teams is going to get a B only because Josh Turberville had one kick out of bounds. And again, it, that is coaching in my opinion. Because when you have a guy that can boot it through the end zone every time, like Josh Turberville can, why on earth are you not let, letting him boot it through the end zone every single time? Uh, I, I just I don't quite understand that. Um, but Jackson Ross punted the football well. He had two punts, average 41 yards a punt. That's pretty solid. Turberville made the only uh, field goal attempt for Tennessee in the football game, so especially he gets a B. And then coaching. I mean, coaching gets an A. I thought for the most part I would have liked to see Nico play more. I recognize that. But it, it's always it's always challenging in a game like this to make sure you get all your guys some adequate reps and also to reward some of those guys who practice every single day and give your, give your team a good look on scout team. And I thought, for the most part, Tennessee did a great job in that. Again, this is not, you know, breaking news in terms of the grading scale today. Tennessee won 59 to three. Tennessee played a really bad football team. Tennessee did well and took advantage of it. Tennessee seven and two on the season, so the grades will reflect that. That's going to do it here for this edition of Locked On Balls. Can't thank you enough for being here. Thanks so much for spending some of your morning, afternoon, evening with us here on Locked On Balls. If you got a question every day or as you take over the show. At underscore Kaner, at Locked On Balls, tomorrow for the mailbag edition of the show here on a Tuesday. Let's get those questions in. And until then, enjoy the rest of your Monday, everybody.